Hi, dear all classmates. Welcome back to the test compression chapter. In the previous video, we talked about test response compression. In this video, we are going to talk about test response compaction or TRC. We use two different words because for test stimulus compression, the information must be lossless. That means when we want a specified one here, this bit cannot be changed. However, for test response compaction, the information can be lossy. That means we don't have to compress every bit of the CUT output. We can ignore some of the CUT output as long as our fault coverage is not changed. So what are the requirements for a good test response compactor? First of all, this compactor must have very high compaction ratio or CR. If we remember, the compaction ratio is defined by the original data volume divided by the compacted data volume. If this number is large, then we have very effective compaction. Number two requirement is that the compactor must have very low aliasing. In the base chapter, we define the PAL probability of aliasing as the number of 40 output that generate gold signature divided by the total number of 40 output. When this number is low, then we have little fault coverage loss. The third requirement is that we must tolerate or mask the unknown outputs from the CUT. This is unique for test response compactor because we don't have this requirement for test stimulus compression. Unknown outputs or X are coming out from CUT, from memory, or non scan free flops, and etc. This unknown bit can be either 0 or 1, but we don't know exactly whether it's 0 or 1 at the time of testing. Please know that the concept of unknown output is different from the a specified bit during ATPG. The unspecified bit would be filled as 0 or 1 eventually after ATPG, and we will know exactly whether they are 0 or 1 when we apply test stimulus. Finally, we need diagnosis support. That means the compacted test response of a fault should be different from those of another fault so that we can tell them apart. When the CUT failed the test, in this lecture, we are not going to details of diagnosis, but this is an important requirement for good TRC. There are two types of test response compactor. In the vertical direction, we can perform space domain compaction. In the horizontal direction, we can perform time domain compaction. For a space compaction, we can reduce the number of output pins. For example, suppose that there are five bits coming out from the CUT. After the output response compactor, we have only 3 bits. So the compaction ratio is 5 over 3. On the other hand, the time compactor reduces the number of output lengths. For example, suppose that there are 6 bits coming out from the CUT and after the compactor, we have only one cycle of 
output sequence. So the compaction ratio will be 6 over 1. So we have these two categories of test response compactor. In the following slides, we will show space compactor followed by time compactor and some X handling techniques. First of all, a very simple idea about space compactor is a single exclusive or tree. As is shown in this example, this CUT has eight outputs. After an exclusive or tree, we compress the output into one bit. So the compaction ratio is the number of CUT output, which is 8 in this example. This is a very simple idea and the compaction ratio is very high. However, this single exclusive or tree is very bad in terms of aliasing. We can only detect odd number of errors. We cannot detect even number of errors. For example, suppose we have one error coming in here and uh, the other error coming in here. Eventually, they would be canceled out, so we cannot observe any error. Another problem about this exclusive for tree is that it cannot handle a known output. Suppose we have an unknown output coming here. Then the whole exclusive or tree output would be unknown. So the output would be contaminated by a single X. Conclusion is that a single exclusive or tree cannot tolerate any X. So how can we make it better? A simple idea is that, can we add more trees? An X compactor was proposed by Professor Mitra at Stanford University. An X compactor is actually a multiple exclusive or tree that detect errors in the presence of a known output. For example, in this figure we have a scan chance coming in from the CUT and this X compactor has five outputs. So some inputs are connected to some of the output. Suppose we have one unknown coming in from scan chain number six. The compactor output number one cannot be observed anymore because it is contaminated by the unknown coming in from scan chain 6. Similarly, output number 4 is contaminated and output number 5 is also contaminated. However, we can still observe output number 2 and the output number 3. If we observe output number 2, we are able to detect errors coming out from SC1, SC3, SC4, and SC7. When we observe output number 3, we are able to detect single error coming in from scan chain 2, 5, and 8. In this way, we can still detect the other seven scan chains. They are not contaminated. So this is a very good idea to tolerate one single X. To analyze this X compactor, we need to define an X compact matrix M. In this figure, we can represent this X compactor by the matrix M, where each row 
represent a scan chain. For example, the second row represents the second scan chain. And each column represents a compactor output. For example, the first column represents output number 1. Mij is equal to 1 means that the jth compactor output depends on the ith scan chain. So that we can see in this example, m2 1 is equal to 1. That means scan chain 2 is connected to output 1. In this way, we can write this relationship. The scan chain row vector S transpose multiplied by the M matrix, we can obtain the compactor output row vector O transpose. In the triple W textbook, there is one theory. It says any single double or odd number of errors at same cycle are guaranteed to be detected if every row in the M matrix has distinct odd number of ones. This is an important theory to design an X matrix. We will explain this theorem as follows. First, a single error is detected because there is no row of all zeros. This is quite obvious. If we look at the first row, we have 1. So we can detect a single error coming from scan chain 1. Because every row has at least one 1. So we are guaranteed to detect single error coming from any scan chain. And then we are guaranteed to detect two errors because adding any two rows produce non-zero results since no two rows are the same. For example, if we sum up row number one and the row number two, we would obtain a result zero, one, zero, one, zero. Please note that the summation is exclusive or so one exclusive or one would be zero. We can notice that the summation is non-zero, so we can detect double error coming in from both scan chain at output two or output four. Similarly, for odd number of errors, they are guaranteed to be detected because adding any odd number of rows produce non-zero result since all rows has odd number of ones. For example, suppose we have three errors coming out from scan chain one, two, and three. If we add these three rows together, we would get the output 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That means if we have three errors coming in from scan chain 1, 2, 3, at least we can detect the error at output 1. So we can see that in this M matrix, every row we have odd number of 1, which is 3 number of 1. In this way, we are guaranteed to detect odd number of errors. So, with this design of S compactor, how can we guarantee to tolerate a known? This is because the X compactor is guaranteed to detect one single error coming in from any scan chain with one unknown 
from any other scan chain at the same cycle if and only if the submatrix obtained by removing that row and the column having ones does not contain a row of all zero. For example, suppose we know that scan chain 6 produces an unknown. So we remove the sixth row. We also remove the first column because the upper one is now contaminated. We also remove the fourth column and the fifth column. Now we have two columns, output number two and the output number three. They are available for error detection. For every row, we have at least one one. So we are guaranteed to detect any other single error coming out from the other scan chains. So this explains why the X compactor is guaranteed to detect one single error in the presence of one single unknown. So how about the compaction ratio? Because every row in the X compactor matrix is non-zero distinct and it has odd number of ones. So suppose we have five compactor output. We can support up to 10 scan chains, which is combinatorial 3 out of 5. As is shown in this example, for 5 columns, we can have a maximum of 10 different combinations where each row has 3 ones. In this way, the compression ratio is 10 over 5, which is 2. Similarly, if we have 6 compactor output, the maximum number of scan chain that we can support can be up to 20. So the compression ratio is 3.3. .3. If we have up to 10 compactor output, we will be able to support combinatorial of 5 out of 10, which is 252, and the compaction ratio is 25.2. This is a very good compaction ratio. However, the X compactor cannot tolerate more than specific number of X. In this case, this X compactor only tolerate one single X. When we have two X coming out from scan chain five and six at the same time, then the X compactor does not work. Please tell me which scan chain error we cannot detect when we have unknowns from scan chain 5 and 6. Please now pause the video and work on this problem. Okay, have you got it? When we remove row number 5 and row number 6, the first column must be removed because it has a 1. So this output is contaminated. Similarly, the third output is contaminated and the fifth output is also contaminated and fifth output is contaminated. So we are now left with only one output, number two, which is available for error detection. If we look at every row, row number two as zero and the row number eight has zero that means we cannot detect error coming from scan chain two because there is no connection between scan chain two and the output two similarly we cannot detect 
scan chain eight. So the answer is scan chain number two and the scan chain number eight. We cannot detect any single error coming in from either one of these two chains. Have you got it correctly? Now let's move on to the next compactor, time compaction. Miser or multiple input signature register is our old friend. Actually, we studied Miser very well in the beast chapter. The structure of Miser is very similar to an LFSR except that Miser has parallel input that fit exclusive OR between stages. We can analyze the Miser by changing it to an equivalent LFSR. We shift the input bit stream and uh, sum them up together to form an equivalent input polynomial n of x. The miser signature is equal to m of x modular the characteristic polynomial. In this example, the remainder is the signature which is 1, 0, 1, 1. So, miser is actually a very good test response compactor. Suppose we have n degree miser and the input bit stream length is small m. For this miser, the compaction ratio is equal to the original data divided by compacted data. The original data volume is n times m and the compacted data is the signature which is n so the compaction ratio of miser is equal to m the length of input big stream which is typically very very large and the probability of aliasing of miser is approximately 2 to the power of minus n which has been proven in chapter 14.3. So, Miser is actually a very good test response compactor with very high compaction ratio and very low probability of aliasing. Miser has only one problem. Suppose one bit is unknown. What is the signature after six cycles. The answer is simple. As you can see, after two cycles, Q3 would become X. And then this will propagate to Q0. So after three cycles, Q0 would be unknown. And then Q1 would be unknown. And then Q2 would be unknown. So very quickly, after one single unknown getting into the miser, the whole signature will be contaminated. So miser has a big problem. It's not X tolerant. So if we want to use miser, we would need some techniques to handle the unknown we will introduce X-blocking and the X-masking in this video. The X-blocking technique add extra DFT inside the CUT to block the X before they reaching the compactor. For example, in this picture, we have a CUT here and we have some sources of unknowns. These sources can be non scan free fab or initialized memory or multi cycle paths or false path and etc. Where multi cycle paths means that we need more than one cycle to finish the computation. 
so the test response can be unknown. And the false paths are those paths not activated by normal operation, so their test response can be unknown. In this way, we inject and mux. When we have X coming out from the X source, we will select a deterministic output so that the CUT output is always deterministic. Of course, the X blocking hardware would require hardware area overhead and extra delay penalty. And uh, finally, we can add external max between CUT and the compactor to mask X. In this figure, we inject three extra OR gate to mask a node. When the mask controller output is 1, this particular unknown would be mask. And also, the second bit of unknown can be mask. Only when the mask output is 0, the CUT output can pass through the mask and enters the compactor. So in this way, the output of the mask are deterministic output. So we can avoid the problem of unknown. In summary, in this video, we introduce useful test response compaction techniques. We introduce space compaction such as exclusive or tree and X compactor. We also introduce the time compaction, which is our old friend Miser. Miser has very good compaction ratio, low aliasing probability, but it cannot tolerate X. So we will need X bonding or X masking technique that can mask many X at the same time. In summary, the X masking technique with Miser or Exclusive or tree is the most popular test response compaction solution so far. Before we end this video, we have some interesting FFT for you. For an X compactor, we introduce the compaction ratio. Now please analyze the probability of aliasing. We have one hint for you. Remember, this X compactor can detect one, two, or odd number of errors. That means it cannot detect even number of errors larger than two, such as four, six, eight errors. The next XFT is about the source of unknown. We talk about multiple cycle paths and the false paths. So what's the reason that multiple cycle paths can generate a known in test mode? And the why false paths can generate X in the test mode? The last question is about a hybrid space-time compactor. As is shown in this figure, we have exclusive or tree. We also have a scan chain. So this is a hybrid space-time compactor. Please tell me what are the advantages and disadvantages of this hybrid compactor. Thank you for watching the video.